So we want to know how to enable Nanite tessellation in Unreal Engine. No worries, I got you covered. It's really easy and fun to play with. <laughs> Check this out. First things first, go to your project folder, which should contain config folder. Open it and find their default engine.ini file. Open it and under render settings section, write precisely this r.nanite.allow tessellation equals 1 and r.nanite.tessellation equals 1. Make sure you spell these commands correctly and just in case I will leave these commands for you to copy in the description. So this is a standard clean project, nothing too fancy about it, so let's do something cool with it. Go to Bridge and download some nice looking bumpy material from Megascan's fantastic library, something that might look like sharp rocks for example. Download it and add that material to your project. By the way, we won't need original Quixels materials at all. We will just use its textures, creating our own material. But no worries, the setup will be very simple. So let's create parent material and name it for example, cool material. Select all three textures and drag them into the graph view. Connect albedo to base color, normals to normals, and this third one is actually a combination of ambient occlusion, roughness and displacement packed to RGB channels. So therefore, just connect each one to its corresponding pin in the material node. To give ourselves a bit of control afterwards, when we will create instance of this parent material, let's create a few tweakable parameters, which will then allow us easily change displacement and tiling values, as well as changing all the source textures without any problem. So bring in multiply node by pressing M on the keyboard, clicking on the graph view, and then bring in the single value constant by pressing 1 and clicking in the graph view. Connect it all in the following way. Now let's create texture coordinates node. Again, multiply node, single value constant node, and convert it to a parameter, naming it for example tiling. Now let's hook them all up via multiply node to all three texture nodes so that we can control tiling on all of them at once. Now let's convert the constant, driving our displacement to a parameter and name it displacement. Lastly, let's convert all three textures to parameters as well so that we can easily change them later to any other Quixel material of our choice. The parent material is done. And now we can create ourselves a cozy material instance out of it, which we'll be actually using on our objects. Now let's create a simple plane to quickly test our instanced material on. Go to modeling mode and create a rectangle, or a square rather, and lift it off the surface a bit. Drag and drop our newly created material onto it and open its parameters. It may seem that there is no texture on it, but no worries, we just need to enable the tiling parameter and crank up its value a bit so it's not default zero. Tweak this parameter to your liking. As you can see, there is no tessellation so far, no worries, we just didn't enable it yet. Also, the plane seems to be quite small actually, compared to player. So I think I will upscale it a bit, so the tessellation effect which I'm after would be more visible. Ok, now we need to enable tessellation via the console, and here comes the cool part. Turn on displacement parameter, but leave it at default 0 for now. Go to console, and very accurately and precisely, again type r.nanite.allowtessellation space 1, without equal symbol. Hit enter, and then type r dot nanite dot tessellation base 1. Again, hit enter. Believe it or not, the tessellation is now enabled, but there is one little step left. Right click on the plane and select browse to asset. 
which will bring you to the source asset of that plane. Then right click on that asset and go to Nanite submenu, followed by clicking on Nanite, which would enable generation of Nanite surface on that plane. Crank up displacement parameter and lift the plane off the ground a bit so we can clearly see it. And here we have it! Long awaited Nanite tessellation is here in its full glory. As you can see, there's a little gap between character's feet and the ground. That's easy to fix. Go to the folder with our new materials and this time select the parent cool material. Select the material node and in the details panel to the left find the parameter called center. It's in the displacement section. Just put there zero and don't forget to save your changes. Look at this beauty. Isn't it cool? <laughs> Now it's centered correctly, and the effect is nice and prominent. And no worries, we'll fix character's feet penetrating the rocky ground in just a moment. What's really cool about it is that you can do the same trick with the landscapes. Just select the landscape and assign our new cool material instance into landscape's material slot. Well, obviously we need to adjust tiling a bit. And lastly, we need to enable nanites for the landscape. After you enabled nanites, click Build Data and let it calculate its... Uh, calculations. Oh wow, we probably need to dial down the displacement effect, as it will be quite painful for our character to walk on such a terrain. That's much better. And lastly, let's quickly change the textures in our instance material so we can check what works best for our visual goal. Go to Bridge, Download and add some other rocky ground or any other type of material of your choice. Go to the folder containing that new material and now just drag and drop those new textures to the relevant slots in our instanced cool material. And again, we don't need that original material, we need only those three textures next to it. Oh, and one important step, once you change the textures, don't forget to rebuild the data on your landscape, otherwise it won't work. And voila, we've been able to change the textures with its displacement in no time. I will crank up displacement a bit. And now let's actually fix this issue of our character's fit penetrating rocky ground. Open parent material and once again select its material node. Then go to Detail panel and in the center field enter some non-zero slightly higher value, let's say 0 0.03. Check this out. What we actually do by this is just pushing the ground slightly down. Now it's really cool, I like it. So yeah, that's how you enable Nanite tessellation in current version of Unreal Engine, guys. Please bear in mind that this feature is still in development, so give devs some time to polish it. However, even in this state, it's obvious that it will be a game changer in terms of visuals. I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please like, subscribe, and sing with me! Fidan da razin da na 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 na